Marketing a business practice is really about putting people properly in their places. You see, in life, we have different types of marketing. We have marketing that's done by us that sort of produces some results and we feel good about it to the point that we almost arrogantly think that we know enough about marketing to sell ourselves well enough to produce a real life. Then there's marketing done by someone else that openly allows us to feel superior because we've paid a lot of money for someone to produce for us a logo, a tagline, a mantra, a design, a brand, but it may not really fit our soul. It also might not be aligned with the way that God wants us to produce a life for ourselves or for our future or for our retirement. That's something a lot of business owners don't think about because they're not in the house of God when they put themselves in a marketing planning state. Then there's a third type of marketing which I promote the most. In my Marketing the Spirit of Your Company programs, I literally help you to produce better results because I'm listening from the point of view of the customer. I am observing you in your sales processes. I am helping you to align yourself better with people who come in your shop, your store, and as a secret shopper of you and them, I'm helping you to see the opportunities you miss when you talk too much and don't take in enough information. You see, the sale is something we know takes often seven touches. There are some people who will walk in like into a coffee shop and literally buy something immediately. They came in to buy, and if you don't qualify whether or not they're ready to buy, you won't ever know it. You might spend too much time educating and totally miss the sale. I've observed that many times in my life. Auto salesmen, especially new ones, are the worst at this. They don't recognize that they can qualify a customer in a matter of five simple questions or multiple choice answers to find out where they should go in the process of the sale and at what point they're in in the sales process with someone who walks in off the street. It's really no different for any oil business or anything else, and I throw that out there because I sort of spent some of my free time this past week, albeit getting out of the rain a lot, in order to try to help a woman who's just launched a practically excellent business practice. It is a hot commodity topic. It has just become literally legal in the state of Indiana and across the land. And openly it helps people with their health care and monitoring and maintenance of their cellular health. But it is an odd business. It is one of those that requires some explanation, some trust of a salesperson, and openly it gives them no opportunities if they're not really ready to buy. You see, when we don't have a sales process, we're not producing for ourselves any sales. When we have no place to work, we're not having an opportunity to talk to people on the telephone to get them interested in our products. When we're so busy in a shop that we can never get any business done for our own selves or sending packages in the mail and other things, we have to have a secondary person. But if that secondary person is messing us over or interfering with other people who come in the shop who could produce a better result than we can, we have to decide whether or not our children are an appropriate fit to work in our shop or any relative for that matter. When we're looking at how do I produce a life worth living and a retirement worth having, we have to look at the people who are willing to fight to love us. What I mean by that is that we can produce in them a hatred or we can produce in them a love. You see, those people who love us understand our goals. They stop trying to put their ideas about our life on us like a mothering person would do. And they literally say, what is your goal today? What is it you're trying to accomplish this week? How can I help you to get to that goal this period of qualification time? You see, time is one of those talents that we have to manage. Treasure is something that we offer to people, whether it's a product, whether it's our services, or whether it's our intellectual property and sales process writing capabilities. It's all about whether or not someone will literally listen to what we're saying. Now, when I'm sort of getting sleepy, it's not because I'm tired. It's because someone has programmed me to not be able to be successful so that they can feel superior, so that they can destroy a life. And openly, that's not right. Now, if I talk about it honestly, they will say, oh, he's not well. He's got mental challenges. They will lie and they will dishonor a man's life. <clears throat> People like that don't often go far in life. 
They work at a company for one or two years and then they time themselves out. They've destroyed relationships through their arrogance, through their inappropriate commentary, through their solicitous behavior, through their flirting, flirting with the men and the staff, for their insulting the women who are there, and openly they can't keep a job more than a couple of years. In my business practice of professionally teaching a foreign language that is very difficult to learn according to most people, simple for me to teach according to my life, I produce clients that were with me for four to seven years, literally meaning that they loved me enough to pay me across seven years of monthly payments. Now let's think about that for a moment. If you're in a service business, if you're in a boutique business, if you're practically in a shop business, you have to have regular con customers every single month, or you have to produce enough events that brings in new customers every single month. There's many ways to make a million dollars is something I've often touted in my extra old videos before I got it cyber hacked. <clears throat> that you can have one sale for a million dollars. Or you could have two sales for $500,000. Or you could have four sales for $250,000. Or you could have 10 sales for $10,000. Do you see the math align? That you can have a thousand sales for a thousand or ten thousand dollars but openly I'm getting out of track in math but I think you get the point the point is that when we're trying to produce a life worth living we have to have people in our lives who will fight to love us that no matter what sort of crap we throw at them they just say okay when you're done tantruming when you're done playing like a child when you're done with teenage texting when you're done with hanging up the phone like a little kid when you're done with all this inappropriate unprofessional behavior Give me a real call, set up a real appointment, let's go get coffee or a meal together like sushi, and let's talk this out. Let's produce a love that is beyond compare to other people's love of us. <clears throat> now practically, in life we have moments of time to make a difference for someone. When a person says, please help me, I need you, that should be an indication that you should get off your ass and go in and help them. When you offer to someone, what is it that I can do to help you? And they tell you, don't take three friggin' days to decide whether or not you can help or not. Make the decision. You're an adult. Decide. I'm going to do this for a month. I'm going to try it for six months. I'm going to offer it for six weeks. I'm going to let it try and see whether it works or not. Not for me, but to help you. In life, people miss all kinds of opportunities to add additional opportunities to their life, additional ways to harvest clients to their life because they are not open practically to other people. They rob them of rights, they steal from them, they get into their bags, they take their money, they inappropriately handle their property, they put them underneath sleeping medications, and it's just not lawful. In life, we have to decide who's willing to fight to protect our life, who's willing to fight to love our life, who's willing to fight to say, you are the most incredible person I've ever met, and I'm never letting you go because I love you. I am passionately in love with who you can become, your personality, your professionalism, whatever the hell it is, and I want to promote your business so that you go farther in life. <clears throat> now, when we talk about marketing, we're often talking about the truth of marketing. What is our greatest strength? What is our difficult weakness? How do we set the weaknesses aside so that people don't see them, so that we're not showing our slip, if you will, as my mother used to talk about to my sisters and their dresses and their skirts, and hiking that slip up so it wasn't showing underneath the slip, underneath the skirt, and openly, how are we doing this so that we're not showing our underwear and the most ugly aspects of our personality to our potential prospects and clients? You see, when we manipulate people, they hate it. When we lie to them, they despise us. When, they, when you utilize someone for your own gains and do nothing in return, or insult them with payment for something that doesn't cost as much as we want to give them money for, it's often on us to produce a different result. Now what I'm talking about is marketing of people. The marketing of people is about helping people to see themselves truthfully, to produce in them language that they can utilize and standardize in the sales process, and to literally produce new results every single day that prove the sales process is working. <clears throat>